Hi, I'm Monica Bay. We're at the University of Florida. We've been attending a fabulous, fabulous conference on e-discovery. And I'm with Tom Howe. Tom, you've had your own firm and you're exclusively practicing e-discovery. Did I get that right? Yes. Uh, I started practicing, practicing law in 1982, so okay. over 30 years. Uh, first part of my career was a personal injury lawyer, trying mm -hmm. a lot of cases. Uh, in the civil area, never did criminal law. Mm -hmm. And about 1999, I was asked to get involved in electronic discovery, which is really at the very beginning. Yes. And my background is a technology background. I've always been interested in computers. I've written books on databases and computer programming. I program with Microsoft.net and mm -hmm. Microsoft SQL Server. So I thought, well, this is a natural when I was asked to join Fios, which is one of the national vendors as their chief technology officer. Mm -hmm to move into that field. I thought it would be very interesting to deal with electronic data. And so did you work for Fios or did you I decide did. I worked for Fios okay. at the very beginning through the venture capital funding yep. area when we were originally building the systems. There were 22 programmers that worked underneath me. I was mm -hmm. the chief technology officer. I thought your name sounded more yes, familiar. Yes, Mary Mack and Mary those Mack. folks and so on yes. and so forth. And so I've always been interested in technology and in 1987, to really date myself, I rode my bicycle across the United States the first time, yeah. and I was very proud of myself because I had a laptop in my saddlebag with a 600 baud modem, and in those days, people <laughs> had 300 baud modems. Hey, now, I used a Trash 80. Yes. So, I'm with you. We're in the and, same. And, uh, and of course, folks listening, uh, this was before the internet. This was yes. the bulletin board days. Yes. So fast forwarding, when I turned 50. Mm -hmm. I rode across the United States a second time, the southern route from San Diego to actually Jacksonville, oh, Florida, wonderful. who I visited Joe's Crab Shack the other day where I ended that trip when I was yep. 50. And of course at that time, here's the internet with AT&T and Verizon cards, uh, small laptops, I had the internet, so mm -hmm. I was always familiar that technology could really help our law practice. So we developed our own case management system, our own databases, and so I started working in electronic discovery and have really been thrilled. I it's an exciting on, area. I think we're on the same page. I put myself through law school doing discovery without the E in front of it, uh -huh. and did contract work, got my degree, and then practiced for about five minutes before I joined ALM. Uh -huh. I was with them for 30 years. So I think we had, and I, I literally did my first story on a Selectric typewriter, uh -huh. and I was the first person in the company that used Trash 80. And Trash 80, if you don't know what it was, was one of the very first ways that you could transmit mm -hmm. a story. It was before, I think it was DOS. Right. And um, it was, it sort of broke my heart to see Radio Shack collapse. Uh -huh. But I digress. What what lessons have you learned over your career in terms of where we're going with e-discovery and what advice would you give to the students here, not just at, at the University of Florida, but the students will be watching our video on career choices right now? Well, the first part of your question, my perspective, which I think if you're listening to advice, you need to hear my perspective. I, um, I was started at Fios mm -hmm. with a service provider, so I've had that experience. Mm -hmm. Then I was involved in some large litigation matters, such as NRA managed care and so on, and I was mm -hmm. working down in Los Angeles, actually living there for months with Pacific Air Corporation. Yeah. It was eventually bought by United Health, And so working with the corporate legal department, I had that experience day in and day out. I worked with other electronic discovery vendors and then m morphed into starting to work with law firms. In mm -hmm. the last couple of years in my career, I've been working with medium-sized law firms, the three to 35 lawyer firms, a few sole practitioners. So they call you in them. if they are running into problems with e-discovery or they just want you to do it? Uh, we provide a solution with smartphone evidence. We collect okay. off of smartphone and provide these PDF evidence reports. We do okay. that with computers as well yeah. and also work as an expert witness, okay. uh, sometimes as a third party neutral and occasionally as a special master. So I've, I've used my experience with law, been a litigator, understand the law, yeah. but also my technology background, having authored book, and I, I spoke at Microsoft Tech Ed seven years in a row, so yeah. I also speak at technology conferences. Yeah. So when a corporation or a client has some issues, I can be the liaison between the yeah. IT department and the lawyers, and there's that a real communication be, breakdown there. There seems to be a real trend in, in it's not, well, I wouldn't say it's a big trend because there aren't, aren't many people who can do that, but it does seem to be something that is coming up more and more as, as larger firms or smaller firms try to figure out how you know we're, we need to be responsible, we need to follow the ABA rules, mm -hmm. how do we handle it? Mm -hmm. 
last question is, is asking about the advice. Well, I think it's an exciting field. Yep. And if there are people interested in technology, this area is ripe for people that can mentor and educate lawyers that need some help along the way. And also what I would advise uh, people to do is use these different technologies yourself. Be a consumer of these technologies. Yep. Use social media. Learn about databases. Buy a book on Microsoft Access and learn how to create a database. Become very proficient with Word and Excel. Learn all of the Google apps that are available. Use the iPhone and become very, very proficient at it. Being mindful of the fact that all of that information may be useful in litigation. So how can you learn some technology and apply your legal skills, what you're learning in law school, to get great case outcomes because that's what it's all about. And um, so uh, it's a very exciting field. It's very dynamic. If you don't want to go into areas of wills and trusts, these areas that uh, work at move, changes happen at glacial speed, you know, it's the same way it was when I learned it 30 years ago. And you want to be in a dynamic, alive, interesting area, and none of us know where it's going. What's your this favorite practice great, area? I lied. One more question. My, my favorite practice area, I, I really can't answer that. As I, as I said this morning in my session, we do a lot of work in family law, but mm -hmm. I love the employment cases. I've been involved in class action fixed pricing case. I've had four police shooting cases. I didn't know police shooting e-discovery was going to be big business. Wow, I can imagine. You know, I, I find it all very interesting. And I'm not a family law lawyer. I'm not an employment lawyer. I'm the evidence guy. I'm the evidence guy. Yeah, I'm the evidence guy. That's not the right word. Uh, and, uh, you get to be at, like at, at a, uh, uh, on a trip where you can eat absolutely anything you want. Exactly. I've got the, I've got the big dessert tray. Yes. The big dessert tray. And we can't, we, that's a perfect place to stop. <laughs> uh, the imagery is making us all hungry. <laughs> Tom Howe, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much, Monica. I'm Monica Bay, and thank you for watching.